So this recorded lecture is meant to describe the fundamentals of setting up an Excel spreadsheet. Perhaps the most typical task uh, performed in a spreadsheet is to um, enter some data and plot it and maybe compare it against some model function and to um, have a, a spreadsheet that's more easily read. It's sometimes nice to have a figure which illustrates uh, what the spreadsheet is about and perhaps a display equation um, that um, uh, shows what uh, model equation is being plotted against the data. So here is an example of, of such a spreadsheet and it contains a figure which was brought in from some drawing file. Uh, it contains a display equation, which is you know, not a, an active equation, but just a picture, as it were, in the spreadsheet that shows the equation of this curve here in this plot. Um, there is a table of data right there, uh, which has been, in this case, read in from a file, although you could have typed it uh, number by number in, this, um, in these columns. Um, and then there is a table here that corresponds to this function. So everything in Excel um, is uh, tables of numbers, and functions are basically tables of the um, Y value, so to speak, against the X values. And these must be created, and I'll uh, demonstrate how to do that shortly. Um, then here is a plot of this table of data and the uh, plot of the line of the data, uh, of the model going through those data points. And this actually illustrates a couple of things that have to do with uh, what professional looking plots look like, and I'll have more to say about that in a subsequent uh, recorded lecture. Uh, but suffice it to say right now that um, data are generally shown as points, uh, theory and model shown as lines, uh, you have a sober looking plot here with no chart junk with uh, uh, horizontal and vertical axis labels indicating the units and tick marks so that you can kind of follow along uh, what the values are and decent choices of the range um, so that the plot uses the available area. So we're going to do these tasks which lead from a blank spreadsheet to this um, and so I will now shift over to Excel um, and demonstrate where such a spreadsheet comes from and how it can be created. So the first step is to create a blank uh, workbook. And in imitation of the spreadsheet that we just saw, I'm going to uh, give a, uh, a title uh, for the spreadsheet and um, and then a title for some of the other things to come just while I'm at it. Um, I'm moving around from one cell to another with the tab key and I want to space things out so that there's enough room for the things that I'm going to put in there um, later. That requires a little bit of planning ahead uh, or trial and error. Um, so I have typed in the places where I'm going to put these various things. Let me go ahead and import the figure uh, that goes here. So this, this uh, top uh, list of menus here um, is sort of the control center for putting different things into the spreadsheet. And um, the one that says insert, uh, which we're waiting to load, uh, is how you insert different things, graphs, pictures, equations, stuff like that into the spreadsheet. So in this particular case, uh, we're going to insert a picture from a file. And this will shortly bring up a uh, file browser from which we'll choose the file that we want to put in here. So now I've navigated to the folder in which 
uh, the file that I want is located, and here it is called stirredtank.png, and it's just a picture of the stirred tank, which should shortly insert itself into the spreadsheet. Uh, it can be resized with the uh, resize handles to whatever uh, size you want. Uh, next, we're going to insert an equation. And again, we go back to this insert menu here. And the equation is this little symbol over here on the right. Which you can see highlights to tell me what it is um, when I click on it. And that should shortly give me a, um, a box into which to type uh, my equation here, which I will do, but first I think I'm going to make it somewhat bigger. Um, and to change the size of this thing, I control click on the box to get the font uh, controls, and then I type into this font box uh, some more reasonable size uh, choice. That's the simplest way to change the font. And I highlight the whole contents of the box and I can start typing. Um, and when I get to something fancy like a superscript or subscript, then I need these little boxes here, which can give me a C with a subscript zero and that sort of thing. And then I tab up to get back out of the subscript and I can go on typing and here I want again something this time with a superscript e to the minus uh, qt over v okay so there's my equation I can drag it up here and now I'm ready to import my data um, That, again, that again is an operation to be done from this top menu. If I click on the data menu, I should shortly get the option to import data from various forms, including from a text file. And here again, I've navigated to the folder uh, where the data text is, um, the data dot text file is. That brings up eventually a dialog box. Um, in which I can make choices about how the data is supposed to be interpreted. Uh, here, I can decide whether I have file that is delimited, in other words, where the different columns are separated by some character, which is true in this case. It's tab delimited. And if I check tab as is the default here, then you can see the line where Excel chooses to put the column spacing. Um, and that looks right. So I go ahead and continue with that. And then I finish it. I can choose here about how I want stuff formatted, but I'm not going to do that now. Um, it tells me then where do I want to put the data and it's choosing this cell right here which is highlighted and that's great so um, there we go. So there's my data table. Um, the file itself had the headers in it which tell me what um, what units um, the, uh, the data is in which is just sort of good practice in terms of um, um, making a data file so that you can look in it and see uh, later what the heck the numbers are. So uh, now I want to construct the model equation as a table over here and this again will be the time in minutes uh, versus the concentration in uh, grams per liter which is what this data is supposed to be. Basically it's the 
uh, concentration versus time in this stirred tank, which is exponentially dropping as you uh, add clean feed to the tank and dilute the contents of the tank. So the equation has three uh, parameters in it, the initial concentration, the uh, flow rate, and the volume of the tank. And those will enter this equation, which I'm going to calculate over here. And so it's convenient to have a little table of those values, which I'm going to label here. Um, flow rate, init, const, and tank volume, just to remind myself what they are. Um, and the symbols uh, that they are and their units. So the feed in liters per minute, the concentration in grams per liter, and the volume in liters. And then the numbers that I have been told from somewhere uh, that I want to use in this model uh, fit are, are here. So now I will create first a table of the time values, which clearly I want to run, you know, to be roughly coincident with these time values. And, um, and maybe I want them to be in somewhat... Uh, finer steps than this, so every 10, for example. So I'll start at 0 and then type 10, and I could keep typing like that, but there's a little trick in Excel where you just highlight enough of the cells to show Excel the pattern of the numbers that you're trying to create, and then you drag down, and you can see in the little box as I go along um, the value that I'm getting up to. So I go up to 120, and then it magically fills in the rest of the boxes. Now, to um, get this equation in here, I start with an equals sign, and then I start typing in a kind of funny way uh, the equation. So I want this coefficient here to be the very first thing, that's the value of C0, and then times, that the asterisk for times, and then exp and an open parenthesis to put the arguments in, minus, and then the q value, and then times, and then the time value, which is this cell right here, and then divided by the volume and that cell there. And you can see as I do that, it color codes and highlights things so it can, you can see kind of what of uh, these little symbols in this equation that I'm typing correspond to what little boxes. So G7 here, okay, means column G cell 7. That's the address of this cell. G6 means this. G8 means that because this is column G. L3, that's this time value right here. So I close the parenthesis, type return, and I get a value. And now if I copy this and drag it down through here, it copies the formula down in here, and you see I immediately get an error. So the, the reason for the error is the following. If I click on this cell here and see what it's done, I can see that where it used to say G7, it now says G8. And where it used to say G6, it now says G7. And where it used to say L3, it now says L4. Now, that I wanted it to do. I want it to use the next time value, but I don't want it to change what cell it's talking about with regard to those parameters. So the way I can trick Excel into not updating these numbers, which it's, it's trying to, to, to anticipate me and copy as if I want the target cell to advance down this column, but I don't want that in the case of these parameters, so I go back to this original equation and click in here so I can change it and put some dollar signs in here in front of all of these numbers that tell me what row I'm talking about. And what that dollar sign is, it means now and forever use exactly this number. Please don't update it when you copy this cell. And indeed, you could put a dollar sign on the column too, um, which would mean which would be interpreted as, I mean this cell now and forever, please don't change it when you do this little copy operation. So then I go back up here, I copy the cell again, paste into this entire column, and now I get something halfway sensible for an exponential decay from 2 to 1.6 to 1.3 to 1.0, etc. 
Um, that's a lot of decimal points. And over here in the home uh, menu, there's something that easily controls how many decimal points you want. And let's just knock it down to, well, it doesn't seem to want me to let do that. Uh, let's try that again. Huh. Oh, it needs to be formatted as a number. And then I can knock the, the numbers of decimal points up and down. Okay, so there we go. Um, now we have our column of numbers. Of course, it's very hard to look at this column and see if it's a good match for this um, concentration or not. Um, but to, to tell that, what we really need to do is to plot one versus the other. So that's our, ne our next task. We're going to first plot these data. And we're going to do that by inserting a chart. In Excel speak, a graph is a chart. And the engineer's friend is this chart here called a scatter chart, scatter plot. So that plots the, um, these values against those values. And you can see we get a kind of halfway decent looking graph. It's not as beautiful as we might like. These numbers are a little small. There's no axis labels and so on. But we'll correct all those in the second half of this lecture. Uh, right now what I want to do is simply add these uh, values as a second curve on this plot. So to add data to an existing plot, you click on the plot, you control click on the plot, you say select data. That brings up a dialog box which allows you to put additional data sets in or change the data set that's in the plot. This in Excel speak is the data set that's in there already. It has a name. That's one cell with a word in it. Uh, in this case the units of that. Um, we might prefer actually that that be called something else. So we're going to replace it with just the word data, which is what's in that cell. And that's fine. And then we'll go on and we'll make another series to put on the plot by clicking this plus. And that allows us to fill in these three boxes. The name of the series will choose to be the word model. This, by the way, is the address in Excel speak of that cell. It's on sheet one. It is column L, cell number one. And note the dollar signs, which mean really and truly that column and that row. Now we're going to choose the X values and that we can do just by highlighting this range and you see this is how you write a range of cells in Excel speak. The first cell colon to the last cell and then we'll choose the Y value similarly like that and we click OK and now it is put this curve on the plot as well, but not as a solid line, but as a set of points. So we'll clean up how this plot looks um, in, as I say, the second half of the, um, of the recorded lecture. Uh, one thing to note just about Excel in general, because of the kind of program that it is, which is one in which you're always clicking and choosing and and you know, using menus and dialog boxes and all that sort of thing. It's very hard to describe in text without demonstrating in the way that we just have how to do various things in Excel. This is really awkward and, and you can't, by looking at a spreadsheet, tell how it came to be. It doesn't, as it were, contain the recipe for its own construction. Um, that is a really awkward feature of Excel and one that we'll try to cope with uh, by providing uh, videos like this to show you how various things are done.